Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and this is You Know You're a Judging Type When. Number one, you can only keep track of one conversation at a time. When multiple people start talking to me at once, I get completely lost and I lose complete track of what's going on. I tell people to Skype me rather than interrupt me so that I can have a focus and I can look at one conversation at a time rather than talk to me at my face or pe multiple people coming to me with different questions I'd rather they just Skype me so I can go through it one conversation at a time Number two, if people tell you three things to do you will forget two of them A lot of time I can only do one thing at a time and that means if people come to me with three tasks a lot of time I will take one of these tasks and I will do it and then they will ask me what I did with the rest of the two and I completely forgot it went straight out of my head I heard the first thing they said but then I didn't hear anything else because I couldn't take in the second or the third thing until I had taken care of the first thing number three if it's not written down on a list or added to your calendar you're probably not going to do it this is the truth honestly with judging types sometimes i say yes to more than what i will do or what i can do but the thing is if you want me to do something add it to my calendar get me to write it down get me to say when i will do it or to make a plan for it because if it's in my schedule if it's in my roster i will do it but if it's just a vague thing that's hanging there I always think to myself I'll do it later I'll take care of it tomorrow I'll do it some other time I have to schedule it first before I can take it in number four you don't want to agree to any plan that hasn't been made at least three days in advance when people come to me asking if I can do things the next day or the night or this evening it's very hard for me to say yes it's really hard because I have a plan in my head I have things I want to do and it stresses me out to have to make changes to those plans because then it changes up then I have to make that change and I have to fix that and I have to rearrange that and I don't like changing plans and I don't like rearranging things once I've committed to doing something once and this is number five once you agree to something you assume that the discussion is over and you get right to work. A lot of time, if I've agreed to something and I made a plan to do something, I'm just gonna do it and I'm just gonna get it done. To me, the thought of people coming up to discuss with me whether I should still be doing it or if it was really a good idea, I don't understand it. If I've agreed to do it and I've said I will do it, I'm gonna do it. and, and I, don't understand why we're still discussing whether I should be doing it or not. Sometimes when people bring up an idea to me, I get so quick to work that uh, they get lost. They're like, oh wait, I, I thought we were still discussing this. And I'm like, no, I thought it was a good idea and I thought we should do it. <laughs> so I ended up doing it. Number six, you need to know the entire whole of a project before you can offer any feedback on one part of it. And this is when people come to me with quick questions or quick advice. A lot of me at time I won't grab the context until you've explained it to me. I need to understand the context first because I'm a context first person. I'm not a detailed first person but a context first person. So explain to me the exact situation. When did somebody call you? What was going on? What were you dealing with? and then I can tell you what solution is right and I can't say a specific answer should I do this or that I don't know because I need to know the context number seven you're always serious even when it sounds like you're joking a lot of time yeah I do have a sense of humor I do have uh, the ability to laugh at and find things absurd and I sometimes make outrageous statements but most of the time I am completely serious. A lot of time people will think I'm joking when I'm completely serious. In fact, yes, 100% I want to do it. It sounds like a joke, but yeah, I want to do it. So don't assume it's a joke. Don't be too sure. Um, push me a bit on it. Say, okay, do you really want to do it? Because a lot of time it will be, yeah, I want to do it. Let's do it. So, yeah, that's it. I'm 100% serious. 
even when it sounds like I'm joking and most of the time I am 100% serious and I'm quite, quite intense about what I do. Number eight, you don't say you can do something unless you know for sure that you can do it. I don't agree to things I can't do. I agree to things because I think I can do it because I have thought about the time I have, I thought about the situation, I've thought about what I need and the skills necessary and I think about my situation and my context and I've thought yeah I can do it. I've judged for myself what I can do and what I cannot do. A lot of people will say I can do this but they can't, they don't know and then they get completely lost in it and what do I do and how do I do it and ah. Uh, and this is also something that keeps me from trying out new things. Sometimes I will say no to something because I don't know how to do it. And I'm not going to say yes to something if I don't know how to do it. I want to research it first. I want to plan it first. I want to look at my requirements first, what I need to do and how it works before I can take something on. Number nine, it's perfectly normal for you to spend a whole day doing just one thing. Sometimes when people ask me what I've been doing, I will say I was writing. And yeah, I was writing from the moment I woke up to the time I was time for dinner. I was writing and I was just doing that. And that was the only thing I was doing. And yeah, I don't see why I should be doing anything else. That was the most fun thing to do that time. And yeah, I just get so into it. I forget what I'm doing or I completely lose track of time. And that's the best for me when I can lose my track of time just doing one thing. Now, here's another thing. Once I start doing something, and this is number 10, once I start doing something, I hate being interrupted doing it. I absolutely hate it. If I'm doing something and somebody says, can you do this, by the way? I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> no, <laughs> I get so uh, rattled by it. I'm like, okay, oh, and then I end up doing that and I forgot what I was doing and I get completely lost and sidetracked. Uh, so if I can, I just want to finish what I'm doing first and get closure. And then if somebody can tell me that after that, could you do this by the way? Great. So ideally if people could just hold their thought to themselves for a second and then remind me once I'm done with what I'm doing. Perfect. Thumbs up. Top class. Number 11, you tend to turn off all notifications and the sound on your phone, making it almost impossible for anyone to reach you. And I do this every day. I never, almost never have the sound on my phone. And that means, yeah, if somebody calls me, I'm not gonna pick up and that can make me a bit anxious at times. Honestly, I know if I'm looking at my phone, sometimes people will be blowing up. Where are you? What's happening? What are you doing? And I'm like, um, I was writing or I was thinking or I was out and yeah, I just didn't look at the phone <laughs> and I wasn't aware. I, oh, sorry, I missed that. And yeah, because, yeah, if I would have the notifications and the sound on my phone on, I would go completely insane and it's just difficult, you know, constantly hearing something beep next to you or seeing something pop up on the screen, I wouldn't be able to get any work done at all. It would be terrible. Not number 12. You start feeling really stressed if you have to do more than one thing at the same time. And this is like, it happens to me a lot. Uh, life creeps up on you. You have lots of chores and tasks, uh, cooking, cleaning, vacuuming. And suddenly you're like, uh, in one hand you've got the vacuum cleaner and the other you're cooking and the other foot you're uh, trying to uh, clear the cat litter, you know, and it's not working out and I feel stressed and I struggle and I feel terrible honestly doing it and um, so I need to do it I, I, I just try to divide my tasks so I'll try to tell myself I'll do vacuuming that day and I'll do cleaning that day and I will do cooking that day and <laughs> yeah I want to have that division it just makes it easy for me I don't like doing chores especially not practical chores so if I can divide it uh, like 20 minutes a day, it's doable. But if I have to spend a long time doing it, it's going to feel like it's eating into my thinking and abstract process a lot. Number 13, you'd rather carry everything in your arms at once than do then go back and do it several times over. Going out with the trash, I'll pick up all the trash and all the boxes that I loaded up and everything and I'll just go with all of it down because I just wanna be done with it. I want the closure, I want to finish it. I want to get rid of it. I don't want to go up and realize, oh, I still have more trash to take out. 
that's the worst feeling. Oh, I thought I was done. No, wait, there's still more. Oh, yeah, I still have to go back one more time. Oh, wait, that also has to go out. No, it doesn't work for me. I'm like, God damn it, I'm wasting time. And that's, uh, yeah, it's not for me. <laughs> so um, the crazy guy you see in the elevator with three bags and uh, boxes on my back. And uh, uh, my little with my pinky finger, I'm holding another bag. And with the other pinky finger, I'm holding another bag. And yeah, my body's breaking apart. But I'm getting rid of the trash that I've conveniently forgotten to take out for the last week or two. Number 14, you can only entertain one possibility in your mind at one time. So a lot of time I note this, uh, and this goes hand in hand with 15, you already narrowed down all possibilities to one before the discussion has even started. I make up my mind too quickly. I've heard option one and I'm already set on option one and then people start telling me option B and C and I'm like, wait, there's more? <laughs> and I'm like, but I thought we were doing option A. Um, they're like, no, I didn't even finish my sentence yet. And I'm like, oh yeah, okay, okay. So option B, what was that then? And then option C, okay, there was an option C. No, there was an option D as well. Okay, what about option A? And they're like, but that's the first thing I said. Yeah, <laughs> what about option A? <laughs> I like option A. It sounded like a great option. And uh, yeah, this is a problem with decision making, of course, because yeah, you do need to uh, look at all the options before you make up your mind. And this is why people have called me too judging and they have said to me, Eric, you need to chill out and Eric, you need to let go and have fun more and you're too serious and you're too intense and you're too one track. And uh, uh, why do you get so stressed and why can't you like have a discussion first and why can't you, why do you have to like push for something? Yeah, it's just, it's just me and my bad habits and uh, things I'm working on and trying to be better at. And um, yeah, that's just how to know you're a judging type. These are 15 things judging types can do. And if you're related to any of them, let me know in the comments down below. Or if you know somebody as infuriating as me, let, feel free to vent your frustration in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next video where I will talk about all my problems as a judging type.